Are you planning on taking a trip on a suborbital flight? I have an issue with that 100 kilometer definition. What it means is that the altitude where we define you for having gone into space is a function of the thickness of our atmosphere. If our atmosphere were half as thick, that number would be 30 miles. If it was half that thickness, it'd be 15 miles. If we didn't have an atmosphere at all, you could just stand there and say you were in space. Orbit. For me, that's where I draw the line. And orbit is really different from suborbital. There's kinetic energy going on there where coming back is an issue. Whereas if you go suborbital, you can just put out your wings and coast back down to Earth. This is something that's not always captured accurately, by the way. In the Star Trek film, where they had that drilling station where they're gonna insert the red matter to make the planet a black hole, don't ask. So there's a platform there hovering above the planet, and one person gets punched off of the platform. And what happens as he comes in contact with the atmosphere? He burns up. No! The act of coming through the atmosphere doesn't burn you up. It's the speed that matters. So maybe I'm gonna save my money and wait for the first orbital tourist flight. I'll be first in line for that. Okay, so that's a no.